So uh, we'll write or we'll draw the ray diagrams for ray diagrams. We are not draw, drawing ray diagrams for lenses right now. We'll see how the uh, you know ray behaves when it passes from the glass lamp. Okay, last time we have seen uh, you know how how the uh, ray passes through, through the glass lamp. So ray diagrams for a glass lamp. All right, so please pay attention. Number one here, when when a ray passes through, okay, passes passes from a rarer medium to a denser medium, denser medium, okay, what happens? it it bends towards the normal it bends towards the normal why does it happen because uh, the speed of light in the rarer medium is more than the speed of light in the denser medium okay uh, what do we mean by rarer denser these are optical densities okay last time i told you that although oil okay listen carefully although oil is lighter than water oil floats on water everybody knows but oil is optically denser than water we have seen last time that uh, refractive index of water okay is 1.33 and that of oil is you know maybe 1.6 maybe 1.65 you know depends what type kind of oil it is so greater the refractive index greater is the optical density so if you imagine that oil floats on water, that is mass density. Mass density is different. Density is mass upon volume. That is different. This, this is optical density. This is different. Okay. So uh, you have to keep this in mind always. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a small glass slab. Okay. Just very small glass slab. We don't have to draw much things. So here we'll have a normal this is the uh, this is the incident ray okay this is the incident ray correct uh, this will be the uh, refracted ray correct refracted ray will bend towards the normal correct and this will be the again uh, emergent ray okay this will be the emergent ray okay all right just a moment Correct. And last time we have seen that uh, the emergent ray, correct, the emergent ray uh, makes an angle E with the, that is angle of emergence and I, right? So angle I is equal to angle E. Last time we have seen that if you extend this, they are parallel. Okay. Here we are not uh, going to draw everything. I'm just here to explain you what happens, right? Excuse so me, this sir. is the this is the angle of uh, refraction. Let me let me explain, please. Wait a minute. This is the angle of refraction, correct? So last time we studied one uh, law. Can you name the law? What is the law called? What is the name? Law of refraction. Ah, no, yeah, I know. But what is the name of that scientist? Snell. Snell's Snell. law. Snell's law. S N E W L S Snell's law. What Snell's law tells you? That is the refractive index of one medium to another. Let's say this is medium one, this is medium two, or let's say this is uh, one. According to you know different textbooks, we have different uh, notations. So refractive index of one with respect to two will be. Let's say this is air, rarer, and this is glass, which is denser. Okay. So here we are going to say sine i upon sine r. Sine i upon sine r. So refractive index of denser medium with respect to rarer medium is sine i upon sine r. What you have to observe here is very, very important. When you say refractive index of denser with rarer, it is always greater than one. Remember, refractive index of denser medium with respect to rarer medium is always greater than one. So, correct. If uh, I is the angle of incidence that happens to be in the medium two. Okay, it is it is going to be in the medium two, second medium. See, sometimes some textbooks like like 
right, you know, write like this. Now there are various notations. You have to follow those notations according to your textbook. Okay, this is not a very difficult task. You just have to see. This is eta. Sometimes they take it mu. Sometimes they shuffle the numbers. Okay, so you have to make sure that it is uh, you know appropriate. I am going to tell you what NCERT and what uh, SSC does. Don't worry about that. So don't panic right now. Okay. So uh, refractive index of glass with respect to air will be sine i. Sine is trigonometric ratio sine i upon sine r. Okay. Here it is greater than one. I am saying that means. Okay, sine. How how sine is right? Okay, sine zero degrees is zero. Sine forty five degrees is one upon root two. Okay, and sine ninety degrees one. So what do you observe as the angle goes on increasing? Okay, the value of sine ratio also goes on increasing. Okay, you'll study this in detail in trigonometry. Okay, ninth SSC uh, has studied this. In in ninth standard, was CBSC. Uh, it was not there, so don't worry. You learn this in trigonometry very soon. Okay, so sine i is uh, is is larger. Okay, D see the entire number is greater than one. That means numerator is greater than denominator. If angle i is greater, obviously angle i is greater. Okay, angle i is greater than angle r. Angle of incidence is always greater than angle of refraction correct so this proves that if refractive index of denser medium with respect to rarer medium is greater than 1 that means sin i is greater than sin r this means that angle i is greater than angle r this also means that uh, when ray of light goes from the rarer to denser it bends towards the normal see always remember one more thing that angle is always with respect to the vertical and not with respect to the horizontal don't get confused sometimes in in the exam they will give you this as 60 degree this is not the angle of incidence aha uh -huh. angle of incidence is 90 minus 60 the complement of this that is 30 degrees okay you have to be very very careful the angle of incidence or refraction or emergence whatever the angle is it is always with respect to vertical that is with respect to the normal angle between the ray and the normal is that clear got it everyone sure okay all right uh, recording is okay. just write one more point here in in brackets you can write down <clears throat> uh velocity velocity of velocity of light decreases decreases okay i'll erase this this is not required decreases velocity of light decreases in the denser medium in the denser medium so what is the reason behind the light bending towards the normal change in velocity that is very you know the the basic thing very important recording in progress next when when the ray of light ray of light passes from a denser medium to the to to a rarer medium it bends away from the normal away from the normal okay what is the reason behind this the reason is that the velocity of light velocity or speed velocity of light increases increases in the rarer medium in the rarer medium okay let us draw the diagram Okay, so this is the glass slab. Okay, now uh, we are going to say that <coughs> this is the you know maybe this is the uh, rarer med. Uh, sorry, this is the denser medium. Okay, this is the 
rarer medium. Yeah. In fact, you can show it in the one diagram itself, but I just want to make sure uh, you, you have understood the concept. All right, so let us say this is the incident ray, correct? This is the normal at this point, okay? This is the normal. So can you tell me where will it bend? Away means where? Away means like this, right? No, That's sir. Correct? Yes. Let me let me make it even more uh, if possible. I don't know. Ah, yes. I think this will be clear, right? So here the angle of incidence is smaller than angle of refraction. Okay, exactly opposite. So again, you have to draw a normal here. Okay, we'll draw a normal here. Correct. And then what will happen? Now again, it will bend towards the normal. It will bend towards the normal. Okay, why? Because uh, it has to match up with the original ray. If you extend the original ray, okay, they again become parallel. Okay. They again become parallel. So same thing. You have to you know, maintain the same thing. All right. Uh, that's all. I think we don't have to write the snail's law again. But if you have to, then uh, make sure that uh, again, this is going to be the denser medium. Okay. So outside medium is denser, inner, inner medium is uh, rarer. Okay. So if you, let's say this is one, this is two. So refractive index of one with respect to two, denser with respect to rarer. Okay. Right. So are you going to write sin i upon sin r again? This is my question. Will it be correct if I write sin i upon sin r? In this case, no. No. Here you have to write sine r upon sine i. So, what is the confusion? What is the problem? Do I remember sine i upon sine r or do I remember sine r upon sine i? The reason is very simple. Okay. The answer is very simple. Try to understand logic. What is the logic? What did I tell you? Refractive index of denser medium with respect to rarer medium is greater than one. And, you know, uh, uh, you have to take the numerator greater than the denominator. So numerator will be greater if sign, uh, sign of that angle will be greater. And when sign is greater, the angle is greater. I told you, sign goes increasing from 0 to 90. So if angle is greater, sign of that angle will be greater. And hence the numerator will be greater. So here, obviously, R is greater, R is greater than angle I, angle I is, uh, R is greater than angle I. This is the major confusion between the students. They always remember sin I upon sin R. And suppose in the exam, I give you this figure and I give you four options, you know, maybe multiple choice or true or false. 98% of the students will choose sin I upon sin R, which will be incorrect. Okay, which will be incorrect. But listen carefully, I'm going to tell you one more thing. Suppose I say I don't want refractive index with respect to denser with respect to rarer. I want respect refractive index of rarer with respect to denser. Remember, refractive index of rarer medium with respect to denser medium is less than one. Is less than one. In that case, you will say sin i upon sin i. Are you getting the concept? Are you getting it? Okay. So this implies, this implies, try to understand. N 1 2 is 1 upon n to 1. So refractive index of one medium with respect to the second is reciprocal of refractive index of second medium with respect to the first medium. Do you understand? Is that clear, everyone? Okay. okay. Why I'm telling you this? Because if you understand this concept, we are going to use this in some of the numericals afterwards. Okay. So please write this down. Uh, and then we shall proceed. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Third one. This is interesting. Okay. When, when the incident ray, 
when the incident ray is incident normally is incident normally that is along the normal okay along the normal that is perpendicular to the surface along the normal or perpendicular to the surface then then it passes undeviated okay then it passes undeviated when the incident ray is incident normally along that is along the normal or perpendicular to the surface then it passes undeviated okay there is no deflection there is no <clears throat> uh, change in direction but will there be change in speed of course there will be change in speed but we cannot prove it i'll tell you because we we don't know the wave theory of light okay when you when you study the wave theory of light in 12th standard physics <laughs> then you will be able to prove it why even when the light does not bend then why does the speed of light change speed of light changes when it changes the medium simple but we cannot prove it in in you know in 10th standard we are not able to prove it because we haven't studied the wave theory of light okay so trust me on this let us draw a diagram it's very simple this is the uh, uh, slab glass slab correct this is the incident ray which is incident normally like like this way exactly along the normal okay so it passes undeviated undeviated it passes undeviated okay so this is the incident ray and it's a, this is the normal itself this is the normal itself this is the refracted ray okay let's say this is the rarer medium air this is the denser medium glass again this is the rarer medium again it will emerge out this is the emergent ray emergent ray which also emerges out normally now my question to you is what is the angle of incidence here can you tell me the value of angle of incidence here 90 degree shabas wrong this is the mistake it's not 90 why what did i tell you the angle of incidence is the angle between the ray and the incident ray and the normal if they are going you know along the same direction if they are parallel to each other do you think they are normal the do you think uh, the angle is 90 this is the common mistake the angle is zero understand this it is not 90 90 would be like if the incident ray is like this normal is this then the angle of incidence will be 90 that is what i am trying to tell you this is a very very common mistake every time i hear 90 degrees <laughs> what will be the angle of refraction huh? zero degree yes zero. zero what will be the angle of emergence zero zero everything will be zero understand this carefully when the lines are parallel okay this is geometry this is not physics or this is not science this is simple geometry when the lines are parallel when the lines are parallel or when the lines overlap the angle between them theta is zero or 180 whatever if the anti parallel okay if i draw two rays opposite rays the angle between them is also 180 okay these are called anti parallel these are called parallel okay anyways you have to remember this because normally it doesn't mean uh, that it is 90 it is along the normal that is what i said along the normal so the normal that is the perpendicular and the uh, incident ray they are in the same direction and that is why the angle of incidence is zero it passes undeviated so angle of refraction is also zero again here it passes undeviated so angle of emergence is also zero is that clear everyone okay oh. so please note here 
note okay although 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 the ray of light although the ray of light does not change its direction okay the speed of light the speed of light changes speed of light changes okay speed of light changes how does it change we, uh, i told you we cannot prove it but of course when it passes from rarer to denser the speed decreases again from denser to rarer the speed increases but there is no uh, change in direction there is no deviation okay that's all here to remember Anna? yes uh, lenses so what is a lens how will you define a lens yes anyone a lens is a transparent refracting medium bounded either by two spherical surfaces or one spherical and other plane correct absolutely okay so unlike a mirror lens is a transparent medium you have to remember okay in mirrors we see reflection okay in mirrors we see reflection and in lenses we see refraction okay we see refraction so uh, basically a, a mirror has only one reflecting surface but a lens has two refracting surfaces okay let me uh, explain that drawing uh, uh, two spheres okay so let me draw two spheres here so this is yeah this is one sphere and let me draw one bigger sphere okay need not be the same uh, size so let us say let us say we have two glass spheres okay two glass sphere with these centers okay and uh, i'll mark this c2 mark this c1 i'll tell you why and if we combine them and then take out take out the common part you know take out the common volume then you will get something like this okay this is nothing but a convex lens this is nothing but a convex lens okay these are nothing but the centers of the spheres which are nothing but the centers of curvature also so there are two surfaces and this is transparent so this is uh, uh, you know where the first refraction happens you know what refraction is now correct where the first refraction happens is called as the first surface where the second refraction happens is called as the second surface okay all right similarly if i take uh, again if i take two spheres okay again if i take two spheres let me ha huh, okay if i take two spheres and and okay i don't merge them okay i keep some gap between them and then i fill it okay try to understand and then i fill it with glass here i feel it with a glass here so what do you get you get something like this don't you right you get something like this what is it it is a concave lens okay it is a concave lens so how do you get the lenses is clear now right it is clear right all right so now let us quickly see what are the uh, types of lenses i'll draw a flow chart here let me erase everything So don't write anything. I'll explain briefly what are the types of lenses. Understand types of lenses. Okay, basically there are uh, two types of lenses. Correct. Uh, one is, of course, they are spherical. <laughs> We don't call a flat uh, surface as a lens. Correct. So they are spherical lenses, of course. So first one is a, a convex lens. now convex lenses are of uh, you can say you know uh, maybe uh, three types okay three types depending on their construction one two three so what is the first uh, type is this is you know both surfaces both refracting surfaces are bulged out convex so we usually call it as biconvex lens okay biconvex bi stands for two okay for, but further as we you know 
develop it we are not going to use the word buy okay simply because uh, we don't need it because we are not we are not going to use the other uh, letters uh, other uh, lenses second one is very interesting the one surface is convex and another one is plane okay another one is simply straight plane and this surface is convex so it is called as plano convex plano convex plano convex simple see it is a convex lens no doubt it is a convex lens but one side is plane so plano convex and third will be again interesting it is a you know one side is convex the other side is concave like this okay here it is thicker in the middle this is very interesting to note that it is thicker in the middle thicker in the middle okay uh, by the way what is it called it is called as concave or convex concave or convex or it is also called as positive meniscus positive positive meniscus positive meniscus okay all right positive meniscus and it is thinner at the edges okay you can see the edges which are thinner next type is obviously uh, the concave lens <coughs> concave lens again similar to this concave lenses are of three types okay they are also of three types okay the first type is you must have guessed it what is it by concave by concave second is concave and one side is plane okay so it is plano concave okay and third will be concave here and you know convex here okay so it is called as it is called as convex so concave convex so concave or it is also called as negative meniscus it is also called as negative meniscus i'll explain the meniscus i hope somebody at least uh, some of you know what is meniscus i'll explain the meaning don't worry in a in a minute so here uh, here by means again two so both both are uh, concave so the, uh, see we are going to deal with when the when both of them have the same center of curvature not like you know one sphere is smaller the other is greater no we are not going to deal with that we are just going to deal with you know both both are equal both surfaces have the same radii of curvature okay same focal length this is what we are going to deal with so don't worry about that okay so quickly draw this see when you take uh, some water in a test tube okay a thin test tube then water does not appear to be like this does it no or you can observe this uh, the free surface of water is not flat rather it is like this okay this is for water okay and if you take mercury in a test tube rather it is opposite if you take mercury g in the inner tube it is not flat it is like this okay so these are called positive and negative meniscus so what is the meniscus this round shape okay this round shape is called as the meniscus okay mununte itha shabda vaparle that that's all nothing else we are going to uh, draw we are going to draw 3 plus 3 plus 6 plus 2 these many ray diagrams okay these many ray diagrams for lenses alone okay so today we are going to see this 3 plus 3 what are these these are nothing but laws or these are called principal rays principal rays these are called principal rays okay so what are they they are basically the rules or the laws which you have to follow for drawing ray diagrams for con convex we are going to draw six convex ray diagrams and two concave ray diagrams okay so 
before actually drawing the ray diagrams which will be asked in the examination 100% one ray diagram will be there 100% okay before doing that you should know how to draw the ray diagrams okay so this is kind of a prerequisite okay so give the heading rules or laws to draw to, to draw ray diagrams to draw ray diagrams okay uh, these are also called as principal rays principal rays okay uh, what is the first principle before that let me tell you what we are expected to do okay just pay attention see uh, when we draw a lens okay uh, this part is a part of a sphere okay try to understand okay these are the solid spheres and lens is a part of it so these two refracting surfaces are a part of the sphere here the these are the part of the sphere okay so there is a concept called center of curvature which we have done in uh, mirrors correct right so basically uh, basically what happens is when you draw a lens okay uh, its mid plane okay its mid plane consists of optical center okay it is called as an optical center right uh, we'll do the terminologies uh, i think we should do the terminologies <clears throat> before we we can uh, actually try this so just give me a minute we'll do the terminologies first what is a uh, center of curvature principal focus and everything and i then i think we'll come back to uh, we'll come back to the uh, ray diagrams okay so let me go to the uh, textbook can you see it everyone right yes okay so as i told you these are the parts of the sphere so sphere has a center the center of the sphere is nothing but the center of curvature curvature what do you mean by curvature curve so this is one curve this is another curve so this surface is a part of a sphere this surface is as part of another sphere right so whatever the center of the sphere is that itself is the center of the curvature okay and what is the radius radius of the sphere <clears throat> is the radius of curvature very simple usually the center of curvature is denoted by c and the radius of curvature is denoted by r okay then uh, don't worry i am going to explain one by one there is principal axis also this is imaginary okay nothing is drawn nothing is permanent okay asa kai aplyal disat nahi do okay aha i can see the principal axis no you cannot <clears throat> okay so what is the principal axis in fact the imaginary line passing through the both the centers of curvature okay suppose this is one sphere this is another i am talking about i am talking about convex lens this is center of uh, curvature 2 this is center of curvature 1 so if you draw imaginary line passing through both the centers of curvature right then that axis is called principal axis okay why is it called principal principal means it is important it is p a l not p a l e spelling principal okay those are principles i mean newton's principle and you know energy conservation principle those are different principal means important why is it important you will learn when we draw the ray diagrams don't worry about that okay it is very important okay <clears throat> so what is center of curvature the centers of spheres whose parts of the surfaces of the lenses are called centers of curvature of the lens a lens with both the surfaces spherical <clears throat> has two centers of curvature c1 and c2 obviously it is going to have two centers of uh, curvature radius of curvature the radii r1 and r2 of the spheres whose pa parts from form the surfaces of the lenses are called the radii of the curvature of the lenses okay here you can see the diagram okay here you can see the diagram okay this is a convex lens here you can see and this is a uh, concave lens okay you can notice uh, the difference between uh, you know uh, the lenses obviously the construction i told you how they are constructed so this is surface one this is center one this is radius one simple this is surface two this is radius two center two 
here also the same thing Con you know you have the same thing for the concave lens also okay all right you don't have to draw this uh, we are just going to refer this to okay so now uh, here you can see the principal axis also this is the principal axis okay these are the principal axis okay done all right so what is optical center see in mirrors we had pole right what is the pole pole is the geometric center of the of the mirror okay so let's say you you know you measure this arc whatever the midpoint of the arc is that is the pole this was the case in the mirror but in the lens see lenses are 3d i told you okay similar to mirror lenses are also 3d right so when you draw lens if you draw a mid plane if you cut the lens you know through the it's through its mid plane vertically then that plane is called that plane is called optical plane okay we'll see why optical plane and whenever you know wherever it cuts the principal axis wherever it cuts the principal axis that is the optical center okay that is called as the optical center okay so optical, optical plane parat sangna na oh optical plane uh, is the plane plane mahite na plane of paper plane ray sadar plane ata hi lens hai lens hi khari bagayla gela samor na magila it is a circular thing right we are drawing from this side try to understand ikadna baktoy apan so you our lens looks like this are you getting my point actually it is like this samajhte ka kay challe so if you draw a vertical plane like this okay so here the plane will look like this this vertical plane passing through the mid section of the lens is called as the optical plane okay and wherever it intersects the principal axis that point is called optical center got it right how oh. yeah so this is called optical center which is denoted by letter o capital letter o okay all right so uh, this is optical center which you can see here okay uh, this is again very uh, interesting which we'll learn while drawing the ray diagrams okay now this is a very important concept principal focus see last time i told you that con convex lenses okay convex uh, lenses are convex uh, convex lenses are called converging lenses it is exactly opposite to mirrors concave mirrors were converging converging means you know bringing the light rays uh, at one point so here you can see uh, figure a if the incident rays are parallel to the principal axis okay after refraction okay they all meet at one point they all converge at one point this point lies on the principal axis this point is called as principal focus okay and uh, similar to the mirror what is the relationship between the principal focus and the optical center the distance between the optical center and the principal focus is called focal length is called focal length it is denoted by small f focal length is denoted by small f okay don't get confused with uh, small f and capital f and why there are f1 f2 obviously there are two foci singular is focus plural is foci okay foci f o c i foci okay because there are two surfaces because there are two centers of curvature hence there are two foci very simple there is nothing uh, you know uh, gray uh, you know uh, uh, difficult uh, part in that right secondly try to understand the relationship so let us say i draw a convex lens here i draw the optical center correct let us say this is the first focus this is the second focus now the relationship between focal length and radius of curvature is you know focal length is equal to half of the radius of curvature okay half of the radius of curvature okay we will do this in the ray diagrams we will do this in the problems okay don't worry but this is what you have to remember but in when we draw the uh, mirror diagram 
okay i am always comparing mirrors because we are familiar with it this is the pole okay this is the focus there is only one focus and this is the center of curvature so what is the reason? this is focal length and this is also focal length so what is the uh, thing here f you know pf is the focal length okay uh, so pf is same as cf try to understand this is same and that is why we have this relationship okay so this is the radius of curvature cp cp is the radius of curvature but focal length is radius of curvature upon 2 so cf will be also equal to focal length this fp is also equal to focal length so cf is equal to fp okay geometry this is geometry this is not physics this is not science this is geometry okay so you have to remember this uh, relationship okay so the main point here you have to remember we don't use center of curvature c1 c2 in case of uh, lenses as you can see in the ray diagrams okay usually we don't use that okay what we use here is f1 to f1 and f2 to f2 let me explain that why and how so here obviously we are going to have center of curvature similar to this here we have going to have center of curvature 2 similar to this but what is the relationship i told you what is the distance between center of curvature and optical center radius of curvature and what is the distance between i mean c1 o will be r which will be same as c2 o what is the distance between focal uh, focal point and optical center focal length right focal length which is f1 o which is same as f2 o but but what is the uh, relationship as f is equal to r upon 2 right as f is equal to r upon 2 right center of curvature is called as 2 f1 instead of c we are going to call it as 2 f1 because it is twice the distance of f1 from o this point center of curvature is twice the distance of focal point from the optical center are you getting my point do you get this so this is small f this will be twice of f same thing here if this is small f this will be twice of f do you understand everyone do you get the point yes sir yes this is very important so instead of using f1 f2 c1 c2 we use f1 f2 but we don't use uh, c1 c2 okay we use 2 f1 that is twice of f1 and 2 f2 that is twice of f2 okay why i'm telling you this beforehand because when we draw the ray diagrams okay when we draw the ray diagrams we have to use these notations otherwise you will not get marks don't use center of curvature c in case of lenses you have to use that in case of mirrors only okay all right so what is principal focus when the light rays parallel to the principal axis are incident on a convex lens they converge to a point on the principal axis this point is called principal focus of a lens okay in case of a, a converging lens like the conve convex lens the principal focus is real both of them are real both of them are real okay real means actual light rays intersect at that point that is why i am saying they are real okay and in case of a concave lens okay they are not real they are not real concave lens is a diverging lens so they appear to be these light rays appear to be coming from this point they, that is why they are shown dotted so these focal points in case of a concave lens are not real they are virtual okay virtual means no actual light rays intersect at it no actual light rays intersect at it okay only uh, only uh, you know uh, we can imagine uh, the light rays which are coming from that or they can be meeting at that point okay they are up they appear to be coming from that that is why i am saying they are virtual uh, the both the principal foci are virtual in case of a concave lens hmm? this is very important to note uh, uh, finally what is the focal length the distance between the optical center o 
correct center of the uh, lens and the principal focus either f1 or f2 okay is called as the focal length of the lens now there is you know there are sign conventions similar to the mirror which we will discuss afterwards sign conventions are used for solving the uh, problems okay all right so uh, i hope uh, all the uh, things are clear center of curvature radius of curvature principal axis optical center and principal focus and focal length all these six terms if they are clear then uh, the next time that is on uh, uh, wednesday uh, sorry on monday we will be able to finally start with the ray diagrams